Now we need to get to the back end of your website to get all of the WordPress settings set up. Just in the previous lesson, you set up all of your Bluehost account settings. Now we're gonna actually log into the back end of your website and set up your website. For now, the easiest way to do that is to click this Log into WordPress button, which is found in the Home tab of your Bluehost account. Later, we're going to go and set up a login so that you can log in directly to the back end of your website. So go ahead and click on the Go to WordPress button. As soon as you get to your website, you'll see a page similar to this. And you see there's a tab that says coming soon active. The very first thing we're going to do is you're going to scroll down and click launch your site. Now, after you have made your site public, you need to log into your email address that you use to set up your Bluehost account, and you're going to do what's called a who is verification. You can see here in my email account, there's an email that Bluehost sent me that says who is verification for my website action required. I'm going to click that, and then I'm going to verify my email. If you don't take this step, your website will stop working. You have to do this verification in order to keep your website working. All right, as soon as you have your who is verification taken care of, you're going to click over to the, back to the tab that your website's on, and we're going to start adjusting some of the settings. There are a lot of settings in the back end of WordPress. A lot of them you just don't need to worry about yet, so I'm gonna walk you through the ones that are rather important so that you can just have your site set up, ready to go by the time you're done watching this video. All right, the first setting we're going to take care of is the date and time setting. You're going to go over to your sidebar menu and you're going to find settings, hover over settings, and then go to general, click general. This is going to let you title your site. So I'm going to title mine, me and my goats. I can put in a tagline if I'd like. This gives me my URL. This gives me my admin email address. And if you scroll down, you can add your time zone, you can put your site language, and you can do your date formatting. Now this is up to you, whatever your personal preference is. <clears throat> I'm going to set mine month, day, year, and time format here. Week starts, Monday, and save changes. And those settings you can set to whatever your preference is. Next up, you are going to go to your sidebar menu. You are going to go to click pages. And when you get to this page, you're going to see two things. You're going to see privacy policy, draft and sample page. Click privacy policy. And this is going to take you to a pre-written privacy policy that's very generic and you are just going to go through and scroll through all of the headings here and it's going to allow you to edit and enter all of your own information so who we are me and my goats is owned and operated by what personal data we collect. So you can just go through and fill out all of the information that's relevant to you. Um, this doesn't need to be perfect. Just having something here is going to help. As soon as you have all of the information filled out that you'd like, you can click publish. So pause the video here, fill out your privacy policy information. As soon as you do that, go up to your right hand top corner and click publish and then start the video again. Now that you have your privacy policy set up, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a login for you to log into the back end of your website through WordPress. So go to the top right hand corner and click the W icon. That will take you back to the main uh, page here. And you're going to go to the top right hand corner and you're going to click log out. Now you see this page here it's going to give you the option to log in with wordpress.com or to log in with username and password. You will always log in with your username and password. So click that 
and you can see this page here it has a very long URL but there's a really easy way to get here and that is by typing your your website URL so me and my goats dot com and then I'm going to type forward slash WP hyphen or slash dash <laughs> admin and then return and it's going to take me to the same page so you got to remember that formula write it down your website URL then forward slash WP hyphen admin so we're gonna go to login with username or email address and your email address is the one that you use to set up your Bluehost account so mine is me and my goats one two three at gmail.com now your password for Bluehost is not the same as your password for WordPress so you're going to need to set up a new password here so what you can do is you'll type in your email address and then go down here and click lost your password this is going to again prompt you to enter your email address okay and then you're going to click get new password and now you need to go back to the other tab where your email is the one that you used to set up your bluehost account and you will receive an email from wordpress that uh, in the subject line says password reset so you're going to go there click the link they gave you to reset your password and then it will give you the opportunity to choose a new password make sure your password is strong um, there are very few security vulnerabilities of wordpress wordpress is a very secure platform but one of the most vulnerable places is your password and so make sure your password has some capital letters some lowercase letters maybe some numbers and special symbols um, doing a combination of all of those things will make sure that your password is not a weak point so go pause the video here and create your new password after you've created your new password you can click log in log in with username and password and then you can type in your username or your email address and then your new password all right now you're back into your site and you log in for the first time using the back end wordpress login you do that by using your url so me and my slash wp hyphen admin all right the next thing we're going to do is set your permalink structure so to do that you're going to go over to your sidebar menu you're going to find settings hover over settings and click permalinks once this page loads you're going to see that there are some common settings some options for common settings and i would suggest using the post name for your permalink that's the easiest one and it makes it nice for the structure of your website as you grow it because every url won't be random numbers it will be your url and then the permalink will be the name of the post or the page and so you can click that and then save changes the next thing that we want to do is to make sure that your site is visible to search engines some of you may be nervous to do that you maybe are saying well why would we want google to see my site yet if there's no content on it well the reality is it doesn't really matter at this point if google sees your site because there is no content on it and so once you do start creating content you want Google to see that content as soon as possible and so from making it so that Google can index your site from day from day one it will just make it so that you don't accidentally forget I just set up a site three months ago and I accidentally made it so Google couldn't see my site and I had posts on that site for three months and in those three months the posts were doing nothing because I had forgot to make it so Google could see my posts so you're going to want to go to your sidebar menu go to settings and then click the reading option as that page loads you'll see here a couple different settings um, that we'll leave for now and then at the very bottom right above the save changes button you'll see something that says search engine visibility and there's a checkbox if you check the box Google will not see your site if you leave the box unchecked Google will see your site so my box is unchecked I'm going to leave it how it is do not check the box 
you want to make sure that box is not checked. So we didn't do anything on this page. You can click save changes if you'd like, but remember, leave that box empty. We do not want Google to not see your site. All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about really quick is a site backup. One of the worst things that can happen to you is that you lose your site, especially after you've put a lot of content, a lot of time and effort into it. And so there's a couple different ways that you can have your site backed up in case something ever happens. The first way that's really common is that your host, so in this case, Bluehost for me is my host. A lot of times they'll keep a backup, so if something happened, if I made a mistake, if something, if someone hacked into my site, I could say revert my site to last week's version. And then maybe I only lose two posts rather than the whole site. This isn't a perfect way because sometimes hosting companies can crash. It's rare, but it does happen. And so it's good to keep a separate backup in case that that does happen. Now, one tool that we use very commonly is called Manage WP. You should write that down. Um, you'll probably wanna go take a look at it. I don't think it's important that you do it right now, but you should take a look at that plugin. What that plugin does is you install it on your site and you can pay, I believe it's $2 a month, one or $2 a month, and the plugin will do daily backups for you so that you don't lose your site. Um, and that's totally separate from your host. So if anything ever happens with your host, if you get hacked, if you accidentally make a mistake and erase everything on your website, you can go over to the plugin and you will have a complete backup of your website. So keep that in mind, write that down, manage WP. It's a great tool, it's only a dollar to a month. So no action required there, um, but maybe after this video, you can go take a look at it. All right, the next thing that we're going to do is set up Google Analytics. Google Analytics is going to allow you to track users on your site. Now this is really important. As your traffic starts to grow, you really want to know how many page views you're getting a month. You want to know which articles that you wrote are doing well. You wanna know which ones aren't doing so well. All of that information can be tracked through Google Analytics. So what you need to do is open a brand new tab and you're going to type in the URL bar analytics.google.com. It will take you to a page that says welcome to Google Analytics. And I have a lot of email addresses and so I wanna make sure that it's on my correct email that's, um, that I use to set up my site. And once I am on that email address, great, me and my goats, I am going to click set up for free. All right, and then you're gonna be brought to this page. You need to name your account. Just name the account the name of your website. So I'm gonna name it me and my goats. Great. All of these check boxes you can just leave Click next, you're going to want to name a property. And so I would call it again, me and my goats. Uh, time zone, you can set your time zone wherever you're at. You can set the currency that you like. These are all just little settings. And you want to click show advanced options. Now at the time of making this video, there is an old version of Google Analytics and a new version of Google Analytics. The new one is Google Analytics 4. So for now, I'm just going to have you set up both types of Google Analytics. So what you're going to do is create a universal analytics property and you're going to check or turn this little lever on. You're going to type in your website URL. So me and my goats.com. And then there's a little bubble check that says create both Google Analytics 4 and Universal Analytics property. And that's what we want. So click next. Business information. Uh, you can just say one to 10 employees and then any of these check boxes that are applicable to you, um, you can use. I, I don't think it really, really matters. And just check a few. <laughs> um, whatever you feel like what you want Google Analytics for, that's what it can be. All right, now we're gonna click Create. You can read through the Google Analytics Terms of Service. Great, and then check the box. And then read through the Google Measurement um, Terms, and then I accept. All right, now I have 
my details. All right, this page is, shows web stream details. What you need to get here is your measurement ID. So what you want to do is copy it and then paste it somewhere in, like, in a place where you're not gonna use it. The place I'm gonna paste it is in my email. I'm gonna compose an email and I'm just gonna paste it in there. Now this G-4, if you see the G- dash, that's for Google Analytics 4. Now I'm gonna paste it there, go back to Analytics, click off this page, um, email communications, just click save. And then I'm going to go click right here under create a property there's a little down arrow and i want to click here where it says ua dash that's the old version of google analytics that we're going to use and dismiss and then i'm going to go to the middle menu here and look at tracking info and tracking code it's going to load the page and it's going to give me this tracking ID. I'm going to copy it and once again paste it into the place wherever you've chosen, paste it there for now. So now you have your two Google Analytics tracking codes. So you're halfway there. Now we just have to enter the codes into the back end of the website so that Google can track. But before we do that, we're going to go back to the back end of your website and we need to add a theme. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to add the Akabato theme. Now, when you signed up for Project 24, you got a free account for Akabato. Um, Akabato is our theme that we've created and it's built to be simple to set up and fast to use for the user. So we're going to go to the sidebar menu. We're going to go to appearance. We're going to click themes and then we are going to click upload here at the top of the page and once again at the top of the page upload themes now here you're going to have the opportunity to choose a file now if you've already downloaded the Akabato theme to your computer that's great if you haven't then what you need to do is go to incomeschool.com log into your project 24 membership go here under more resources and click akabato theme you're going to be able to download the latest version of akabato here where it says download akabato here so click the download click download latest version the download will run and once it downloads go into your finder if you're on mac or to your folders um, on PC and then go to your downloads. And then you'll see the Akabato download here. Um, currently it's Akabato version 1-4. And so what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna zip or compress the file. So uh, side click and then it gives you the opportunity or the option to compress here. And then once you've compressed it, you now have the zip file which will work for uploading to the website. So leave that there go back to the back end of your website <clears throat> and then click choose file go to downloads and then click Akabato and then the zip one don't do the original file do the zipped file choose install now all right uh, you can see here it kind of gives you some information they unpack the theme install the theme the theme is installed successfully now you can click activate and it's going to prompt you here. You can see it says the Akabato theme requires a valid subscription. So we'll go to the sidebar menu, go down to the bottom where it says Akabato Manager, click Akabato Manager, and you're going to enter the email address that you used to sign up for Project 24. And so enter your email. and then click activate. Great, now the theme is active. So now that the theme is active, we're going to enter in the Google Analytics tracking codes that we just pulled. So you're going to go over to the sidebar menu, hover over Akabato settings, and then go down to SEO. 
On this tab, it's going to give you the option to add a site title, description, which you can do. And then below that, it says Google Analytics GA4 code and Google Analytics UA code. So go back to the place where you copied your codes to and grab the G code, copy the G code, and you're going to paste the G code under Google Analytics GA4. So paste it in and then go grab the other code, the UA code, copy the UA code, and paste it under the Google Analytics UA code. Great. Now that your Google Analytics codes are there, um, we're going to change a few more settings on this page and then we're going to click update. So you can put in your site title, you can put in your site description if you'd like, and then below um, there's a couple different options that we've added into Akabato that you can use. Um, if you are going to be doing book reviews, great. Um, we have a little bit of formatting that's built into the theme that makes a book review look nice. If you're not going to do a book review, then you can just um, uncheck the box and go back and check it if you ever do decide to do one. Um, if you're going to do product reviews, then you can keep this box checked. But for now, I'm just going to uncheck it because I'm just going to be writing some basic posts first. Um, if you're going to do recipes, same thing, or video reviews. Personally, I'm going to uncheck the boxes. It'll just make the theme run a little faster um, in the beginning. So after you do all those changes, click update. Great. Now that your tracking codes are added to your website, Google is going to start tracking any traffic that comes to your site. Now, don't expect traffic to come right away. Uh, it will take some time. Usually it takes quite a few months for some traffic to start coming. But it is good to know how to use analytics. So we're going to go to um, Google Analytics, back to the page where we grabbed the UA tracking code. And you can go up uh, just with some basic navigation here. Go to the top next to the analytics logo and it will say all accounts and then click on that. And then you can choose these um, different properties. So you see I have my UA property and my new GA4 property. So to click and to see the data under those things, um, just click and it's going to open up all of the data reports that it has. So basically this just shows you the users that are on your site, sessions, um, all of these different, the session duration, if there's any active users it will show you. And here you can do, you can look at real time data, uh, you can look at your audience, uh, kind of get an overview of some different um, statistics about your audience. Down here you can see where your audience came from, you can look at their behavior on your website. All of these different statistics will just help you understand your audience. But we'll have other videos on how to use Google Analytics the, for the best way possible later on. All right, let's go to back to the back end of your website. And now we have some work to do with the theme. The theme is going to be pretty easy to set up. If this is the first time you've ever made a website, um, it's going to be really, really easy. You can see here, if you're on the SEO settings page under Akabato settings, SEO, and then you can see that there is a message here. It says this theme recommends the following plugins. So it says Google Fonts, Lazy Load for Video. So it's gonna give you the option to install these plugins. The one we're actually going to look at first is the one-click demo import. And so what you'll need to do is you're gonna to wanna to go over to the menu and you're going to want to click on plugins. Once the plugins pages loads, um, let's go to the top here and let's just get rid of some of these so you can go to these X's here and we'll remove some of these X's. You can leave this one with the recommended plugins. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the top, plugins, add new. And then let's search plugins. We're going to look for one click demo import. Okay, the first one here is the one we're looking for. So you're gonna click install. All right, and then activate. 
All right, now that the one-click demo import plugin is on your site, now you need to go over to the sidebar menu and you're going to hover over appearance and click import demo data. What this is going to do is it's going to import a bunch of settings that will just make it super easy. Um, that It's really kind of going to be set up for you once you do this. So go to the bottom here and click import demo data. It might take a couple minutes, so just be patient with it. Okay, as soon as the import is done, um, you may see a couple things here. It says fail to report recipe category. That's because we turned off some of those settings. It's okay. So now what you can do is go to the top left-hand corner and you're going to see uh, where it says the name of your site next to a little home icon and click that. Um, click the title of your site. Now it's going to bring you to the front end of your website and it's going to show you um, what your website should look like. And so you can see it's put um, an image where the logo should be. It's put some things in the menu. It's added a few blog posts, some images. It put the About Us category in. It put some legal info in. All of these things are things that you would have to do by yourself um, if you didn't do this um, import. So this makes it a lot easier, but I'm still gonna show you how to do it yourself um, so that you can kind of know how to navigate um, the back end of WordPress. But before we jump into that, there's one last setting that we're going to, uh, to look at. We're gonna go down to settings on the sidebar menu and click discussion. This is going to give you the option to regulate some of the comments that are happening on your website. Um, comments can be helpful to get feedback from your audience, but they can also be really discouraging. And a lot of times they're just used to spam. And so there's a couple things that you can do. Um, you can look through the settings here and it will just give you the option to um, hold the comments for a review so that you don't have to worry about um, spam comments being published on your site. So before a comment appears, um, click that a comment must be approved or the comment author must have previously um, been approved. So just click that checkbox there in the middle and then save changes. All right, that's really all you need to do to get your website set up. Now, if you already have content or you really want to know how to edit any of these settings that we have set up here on your website, um, in the next video, you're going to be able to see those settings and how you can manipulate them manually. And so I would recommend watching that video if you're not comfortable using WordPress. If you are, then you can probably just skip the next video. Otherwise, watch the next video to see how you can manipulate the specific Akabato settings so that you can really customize the look of your website. All right, good luck.